All right, so we're doing an example here. This is example four in the uh, in the text you have, uh, Red Calculus, Stewart, uh, page 324. And this is in the section 7.4, Applications of Trig Functions. Now, we'll read through the example here. And this is a, an important type of an example because you're going to get, you know, questions that are al like almost identical to this in future assignments and tests. So this is a really important type to get a handle on. We've done related rates questions with triangles. But this is one of the few that we do with, um, you know, rotating angles, so, so a moving of an angle. All right, so it says a beacon. So this is like a, uh, a lighthouse or a, a big light that's uh, flashing, uh, that's shining, is located a perpendicular distance, okay, of 315 meters to the shore. So if we were to draw this, we might draw something like this. Here is 315 meters. Here's the shore. Okay, and here is the beacon, okay, and this is, you know, part of a lighthouse of some sort, okay, the door, okay, we got the light there, and it's shining, got it? All right, from point R, so we can label point R here, that is on the shoreline, and this is the direct 315 uh, meter uh, line here. It's a straight shoreline, that helps, and the beacon, it says, revolves at one revolution per minute. Okay, so the revolving is one revolution per minute. So one revolution is two pi radians. So two pi radians per minute. Okay, that's kind of the unit. So really, um, uh, the rate of change of the angle, right? Because it's the angle that's moving, you know, as, as this thing rotates, right? And it would make sense that it's rotating and shining. Uh, so that's going to be d theta over dt. Okay? equals basically, you know, 2 pi, right? One revolution. Uh, so, <clears> the <throat> question says, how fast is, uh, does the beam sweep along the shoreline? Okay, this is where it gets, this is where it gets a little bit iffy, okay? We're sweeping along the shoreline. So, as you can tell, these little light rays right here, okay, they are shining on the shoreline. And, of course, as this beacon rotates, right, if this was at regular time intervals, you can kind of see how, what would happen is the light would move, you know, and then it would seem like it moves along the shoreline faster, right, as the distance between the light and the shore increases, or, or the direction of the beam. So this is like increasing, like almost exponentially, right? So little jump, bigger jump, bigger, 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 big, big, and then all of a sudden it, you know, turns around and it comes in here again like this, right? And then it starts to kind of slow down. And, okay, you seeing that? Kind of getting that? I'm belaboring this point. Anyway, so we have a change in the angle. That's just changing. Nothing's happened with that. But how the, the light shines on the shoreline, that motion, that change, is changing all the time. And so how fast does the beam sweep along the shoreline? That's the instantaneous rate of change of the motion, okay, of the spot on the beach as the light shines along. At point S, so we should put in a point S here. Okay, so let's say point S here. On the shoreline, that is 425 meters from R. So this right here is 425 meters. Okay, now it's important to note, very important to note, that this 425 is at the time that we are concerned with finding this rate of change, right? So do not put the 425 in right away. This 315 is a constant throughout the, the problem. So we could probably use this 315, but you've got to be real careful with this 425. This comes later. So you've got to be careful with that, okay? That comes later. What we could do is we could say, um, obviously I'm looking for a rate of change of this side of what would be this triangle. So we could name this side X, and DX over DT is actually what we're looking for, right? So what we're given, uh, what we're looking for. Okay, any, any questions at this point? Uh, we've laid out our, our diagram and our triangle and our quantities out pretty well, I think. Uh, so this is, everything is in there. Obviously, this is a theta here, right? So 425 will come a little bit later. We'll just keep that All right. So from here, what we need to do is we need to find some kind of uh, relationship. 
And if we're talking about, I'll just draw this sketch real quickly again. If we're talking about this angle and 315 uh, and x, okay, the relationship between the angle 315 and x is what? Remember, this 315 is perpendicular to the shore, so we do have a right triangle. So that means that tan, uh, tan of theta equals opposite over adjacent. Good. So x over 315. So any kind of relationship that you can, um, you know, draw upon here, this is this is great. Of course, you want to include the variable of the, you know, for the rate of change that we're looking for. All right. So that means that x equals 315 tan theta. All right. You okay with that? All right, so um, remember that we are given theta prime, right, uh, d theta over dt, and we're looking for x prime, dx over dt, and so we don't have any other variables to worry about here. Uh, even if we even if we did, I mean, you know, it's not, not that big of a deal, you know. Uh, I guess when it, this comes to play here, we're going to have an x in the final uh, equation, we're going to have an x prime, we're going to have the theta prime, and we're going to have a theta, and so that will come a little bit later that we're not given the angle, but we are given this 425, and that's how we're going to find our angle at the moment in question. Okay? So I know I'm, I'm saying this is a lot of information, and I'm, I'm sort of just rattling off this. And honestly, I, so if I stop to listen to myself, it's like, okay, this is just 20 years of teaching calculus coming in. It's, it's like I've said this so many times. I know what I'm saying. I don't know if you know what I'm saying. So please, just throw up your hand. Give me some kind of disgusted, confused look, and I will keep you in that I need to say something again. Okay? Are we good with that? So I apologize if I'm going too fast here. Or if I'm just saying a bunch of mumbo-jumbo. But hopefully at this point, some of this is making sense, right? We've done a few of these questions, these related rates type. So as I continue on, let's now take the derivative, okay, uh, the derivative of this equation here. And that's going to be... What's the derivative of x prime? Okay, the derivative of x is... Now, is this re with respect to x? No, we're, we're differentiating with respect to time. Remember these questions? Time is going on. So, the derivative of x is not 1. If we were doing, if we were uh, differentiating with respect to x, then the derivative of x is 1. But, um, the derivative of x here is just x prime, or dx over dt. Okay? That's all it is, right there. Equals. Now, the derivative here, okay, so we have to reach back into our, go back to your notes if you don't remember this already. Um, what's the derivative of tan? Secant squared, thank you. Secant squared theta, right? And then, of course, the 315 can just hang out there. It's a constant. And then times, chain rule, right, d theta over dt. Okay? All right? Now, because this was just an x, we actually don't have an x term here. If it was x squared or if it was 3x or anything like that, you know, uh, well, not if it was 3x, but we might have an x term here where we'd use this 425 directly. But we're going to use this 425 just to calculate theta because right now, this is what I'm looking for, so that's fine. This is what I'm given, so I can plug something in here. But do you see what I was saying there about this theta? We're not given this theta, right? So we have to calculate what theta is so we can put uh, uh, theta in there, right? Okay, so let's, let's do what we can. So dx over dt equals 315... Uh, secant squared, and I'm going to leave this blank for now, and I'm going to put the the, uh, uh, the rate of change here uh, as 2 pi right there. Okay. Now, how do we solve for theta? Well, remember, we are now dealing with the moment in time uh, that is in question, where this is actually 425. So now I can use this exact value, and this exact value, and this angle right here, and I can set up... Um, I can set up, I can find theta. Okay? Now, yeah. All right, so we can just use a decimal. We don't have to worry about anything fancy, 
roots or whatever radicals, exact values. So again, tan of theta equals opposite over adjacent, right? So that's 425 over 315. Okay, you guys okay with me there? All right, so uh, what is theta when this is the case? Get your calculator out, second function, right? That here. Uh, what are my radians? Yeah, my radians. Okay. So second function tan. I'm going to do second function tan because I'm looking for this angle, and I'm just going to plug this in. 425 divided by 350 is 0.9329. Okay. So if this angle is 0 0.932 radians, then we would put this into our equation. So let's see what we get when we plug everything in and see if we can find our rate of change of this side with respect to time. Okay. So just as a reminder here, this there's no button on your calculator for secant. So we really should write this as 315 times 2 pi divided by cos of 0.932 all squared, right? So if, if you put it like that into your calculator, then you're going to be able to get that answer. All right, and so I did that up here in the calculator, and I get a number about 5567.5. So I guess the other thing we have to uh, just uh, be concerned about, you got to go back to the question, and, and what about units for this thing, right? Well, rate of change uh, for this x, and this is 425, you know, meters, right? That's the, uh, okay, and then this is minutes is the time, right? And so that's how you determine sort of how this rate of change is all going to pan out. So we've used a rate of change of radians per minute, and we've also used a, a measurement of distance of meters. So then our rate of change that we're going to end up with then should be in meters per minute. Okay? Actually, I'll just leave that up for a second. And you'd write a little word sentence, just a, just a phrase or two, right? The rate of change of the beacon is 55, 67.5 meters per minute. Even just something like that. Okay? Any questions?